is to worship. Church, if you really want the glory of God, there has to be a worship. Not just on Sunday. Because you don't just live in 2065 Broad Street. We have to leave this place. And the same worship that we practice on the mountain, we also have to practice it in the valley. So we have to learn how to worship. Worship is the posture of the church. It's, it's the position of the church. If, if, if you don't have a church that worships, you have a church that's not good that's been created. If you know why God created you and I? We created to worship. And they that that's, you know, you, you miss the trip of the enemy. That's why the enemy has told you since you got in this room. Sit still, don't move, fold your arms, look at everybody crazy. Don't wave your hand, don't say amen, don't try to smile, don't run no back, don't do nothing. Because the one thing the enemy don't want you and I to do, he does not want you to worship. I don't know he doesn't want you to worship. When the got up this morning, everything went crazy. He would got on your nerves. Anything that could go wrong, did go wrong. The dog started barking funny. The wife started tripping. The children started acting crazy. The car wouldn't stop. They couldn't find your purse. Couldn't find your body. There were crazy things going on around you. You saw a text message that you wouldn't have read. And everything that you got could stop you from worshiping got all in your mental life. And now here you are in the Lord's house. Have not given God my walking in the world. He's having a talk with this particular woman. He's having, he's having a talk with this woman, with Jesus, Mary, and Mother. She's, she's coming to the well at around noon. That's, that's the reason why she came to the well around noon, because she had a reputation. And uh, all the other sisters in the city, they said, if I catch her slipping, it's going to be me and her. You don't know why I say that, just go on. So she comes to the well at noon. Jesus is at the well. He meets her. He starts talking to her about living water, water that she, this ain't Fiji water, boss water. This, this is another kind of water. She asks for this water. And he said, All right, I'll give you something first. Go get your husband. She said, I ain't got no husband. And uh, Jesus, being the man of God, and he said, Oh, yeah, you're right. Uh, you know, you, you, you ain't got no husband. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, tea on yourself. You have time. And the one you win is not your name in the That's why she came to the well at noon. Because she had five husbands, but didn't say they were brothers. Now, now, this is the So, the good news is that if we catch our skipper, it's going to be all over. Like, 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 and so, this shit is happening. It's noon day disco. Because who knows if you're born at noon day? You look for hot sun. So, Jesus. Tell her who she is. Oh, she said, oh, okay, you're a prophet. Well, since you're a prophet, let me deviate from myself and talk about something we have in common, which is worship. And so we get around in verse number 20, uh, Mother Elder, and now they, they, she starts talking about uh, we Samaritans worship uh, in this mountain. Now, here is Y'all worship in Jerusalem. And so Jesus is saying to her, you, you tripping off of worship, off of the places to worship. When they really got me, you would way to worship. And which leads me to my first point. That if we want worship, we must understand the point. That worship is not to be hindered regionally. It's not to be hindered regionally. She's talking about worshiping on a mountain. And she said that y'all Jews, you do know about this time, the Samaritan and Jews have no deal with each other. And so she said, y'all Jews worship in Jerusalem. We worship up here on Mount Garrison. And so uh, y'all have some segregation right there. But I like Jesus because during this discourse, he's, he's broken some barriers with this woman. He's broken the racism barrier. He's Jew, she's Samaritan. He's, he's broken the sexism barrier. Because you do know around this time, men and women should be talking to each other about themselves. That's one reason why Jesus said, go get your husband. Because before I give you anything, I gotta make sure your husband get it, 
and he featured to you directly. He also broke in the class is a marriage. Because she thinks she's better than him. He's a little good person. And God said, if I'm going to deal with you, I'm going to break down some barriers in your life. And some of you will think that that worship is only coming from 26, 25 Broad Street. But God said, no, you can worship me in Walmart like you do in here. You can worship me in any time like you do in Sunday school. You can worship me in the superhouse like you do in the We worship. But baby, my worship ain't based on what I am right now. Because I gotta have a worship past Sunday morning. Because some of us are gonna miss Monday is right around the corner. And the same worship I have right now at 12 noon or 12 30, I gotta have that same worship. You've never had that worship experience yet. Some of us in here can testify, you've been all by yourself. The kids were going to school, your husband was at work, and all of a sudden you thought about how awesome God was. And when you thought about how awesome God was, you started thanking God right in your living room. You had to cut your vacuum cleaner off, and you had to say, Lord, I begin to, you never had a worship experience like that. Some of you have been at work, and you had to log off of the computer. You have to take your 15 minute break. Go to the bathroom because you didn't want your boss man to see you lift up your holy hands. You didn't want your coworkers to think of you crazy. Sometimes your worship experience is not in the house of prayer, but you turn wherever you are into a worship space. Yes sir, yes sir. Jesus says to her, it's gonna come a time where you're not gonna worship on this mountain or either in that temple. There's gonna come a time, and watch this y'all, he spoke prophetically, but the time is right now that it is not based upon where you worship. Because worship ain't just where you are. Worship is who you are. And maybe I need to poll the place in here. Is there at least five of us in here that can say, you don't have to be on a Sunday. It can be on a Monday. It can be on a Tuesday. It can be on a Thursday. It can be on a Friday. Hey, they don't have to come through and I still worship God. I gotta go to the school behind my child and I still worship God. My, dis my, my disability ain't came in, but I still worship God because it's not about what he does. My worship is who I am. Worship is not hindered by your region. He says the time is coming and now is that you're not gonna worship on this mountain. And neither you gonna worship in Jerusalem. But that's one more something else I gotta hear. Worship number two should not be held ritually. Should not be held ritually. You still got your Bibles open? I'm at verse 22. Because Jesus says something to this woman. He says, You Samaritans worship what you don't know. We worship what we do know. In other words, what he was suggesting is when y'all worship, you just going through the motions. 
Go ahead. You really don't know who you're worshiping. That's sad. There are some people who come into the Lord's house and they do what everybody else does. They clap because you clap it. They dance because you dance. They shout because you shout. And really don't know why they're doing what they're doing. If I said praise the Lord, everybody. So you just did it because I did it. God is good. So you did it because I did it. So you clap because I clap. And that's how some people are when it comes to worship. They do it by routine rather than relationship. And worship is not based upon doing what somebody else does. Because God don't mean to you what he means to somebody else. God. Now, 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 my wife don't mean to you what she means to me. Talk back to me if you can. Your spouse don't mean to me what they mean to you because that's your spouse. And when it comes to your relationship with God, your neighbor can't worship God like you worship God because God ain't been to them what he's been to you. Maybe that's why Big Mama used to sing the song, I don't know. Oh, Jesus. What he is to you. <laughs> but I hope he is to you what he is to me. Didn't Big Mama say he's all I like to own. He's my chief and cornerstone. Now watch this. The worship that you're about to give is not for what he's done for your neighbor, but it's for who he is to you. I thank you for being who he is to me. I worship him because of who he is to me. And you ain't got to tell me who he is. I know who he is. It's one thing, Mother Elder, to hear of who God is. But when you know. <laughs> See, that's, that's, that's why some folk, that's why some folk, that's why some of y'all looking at me quiet. Because you heard, but you don't know. Oh, but if you know. Ain't nobody got to tell you to give God the glory. If you know who he is, you don't need no tambourine. You don't need no praise and worship leader. You don't even need a sanctuary. I will bless the Lord. Oh, yes, I will. I drive in my car and have to pull over on I-10 because of who he is to me. I have to lead, I have to scoot out of here because of what he is to me. And maybe I need to ask the question, what is he to you? All right. Because watch this, worship is defined by worship. It's not in my notes, but that's for free. Worship is defined by worship. It's not what he means to me. What does he mean to you? Because if he means something to you, you won't let somebody know what he means to you. I, I, I got a problem with silent saints who can never worship God at no time. But a louder about a football game. They're louder about Kavanaugh and the FBI probing about what's going on with the Senate here. You do more tweeting and texting and inboxing and Facebooking and Instagramming, but won't come into the Lord's house and say, Lord, I worship you. Lord, I bless you. We are louder for secular things, but we are quiet when it comes to spiritual things. But if God is worth anything to you, you ought to let him know it. And let somebody else know it. I ain't got no closet religion. I can't hide the God I serve. So if you see me lift my hands, please excuse me. If you see me running and bucking, please excuse me. He ain't to you what he is to me. What is he worth to you? What is he worth to you? Is he worth telling somebody I know a man? Help me, Holy Ghost. From Galilee. If you're in sin, he'll set you free. What is he worth 
to you. We can't be ritualistic when it comes to worship. We can't just come in here every Sunday, sit in the same place, doing the same thing. Arms just folded, legs crossed, want God to entertain us. God give me a show. Like, 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 old, like, like, like old boy on the players club, do something to make me feel better. That ain't what God is here for. If God don't do anything else, he's already done enough. And since he's already done enough, I have every right and responsibility to worship him at any time, at any place, regardless as to what anybody else thinks about it. You can't be real. Sometimes you, you just gotta forget this. Worship can't be the same. Your, 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 your glory to God can't be the same. Do something different. Show the Lord that you appreciate him. I, we were in Sunday school and I heard Deacon Davis talk about uh, how, he make, how he used to make amends with his wife. And he used to bring flowers and then he had to change his game up. When it comes to worship, you can't do the same thing all the time and expect God to give you something different. No, baby. If you really going to worship God, you got to come out the box with God. And sometimes your neighbor will become uncomfortable with your worship. Your haters are going to like, not like your worship. But the worship is not for them. Yeah. The worship is for you. Yeah. Amen. You worship what you don't know. We worship what we do know. And baby, the question is, what do you know? And not, not, not just, not, can, I, can, I, can, I, can I add, can I make an addendum to that? And not just what you know. It's who you know. Because if you know who you know and know what you know, it wouldn't be a problem with you this morning. You don't care if your pew partner ain't here today. You didn't come here for your pew partner. You could care less if pastor was preaching or somebody else was preaching. I came to give God the glory. And if I miss this Sunday, I'm still going to give God the glory. When I get on the parking lot, I'm going to give God the glory. While I'm cranking up my car, wait for the AC to cool off my vehicle, I'm still going to give God the glory because of what he is to me. Got to get past ritual. We got we to we change the game. We got we to we be different. We can't just come and just give the same old redundancy. Because redundancy is empty and it's non-effectual. That means we just, it's sad, it's sad to say, some folks just come to church and get nothing out of it. And you know the bad part about it is? They're happy with that. Why be happy? Coming to give nothing. Then get nothing, leave with nothing, and be just as happy as you can be. And that's not what worship is about. Worship is intimacy with God. And I'm, I'm, I'm here to tell you that when you become intimate with God, you're not going to leave that experience the same way you came. I wish I had some help in here. Some of us in here, tears been coming down your eyes since the service started. You couldn't stop telling the Lord thank you since the service started. And not just here on Sunday, but some of us in here during the week, we've been worshiping God all week long. And that's why it's not a problem for you to come in here and worship God. Because before I came to church, I brought church with me. I don't, I, I'm not ritualistic now. 
can't be ritualistic when it comes to your worship because God is not ritualistic with you. Didn't you hear Ecclesiastes says he, he gives us new mercies. So why would you give ritualistic worship to a God that gives you new mercies? If God has given you a new day, give him a new worship. If God has given you another chance, give him another worship. Simply because he does not want redundancy. Well, let me get out of here. But there's one more thing I got to tell you. And I promise I'm about to do That our worship should not be held ritually. But our worship, number three, is to be honored rightly. It's to be honored rightly. Jesus says to this woman, I'm in verse number 23. He says, but the hour is coming when true worshipers will worship the Father how? In what? And what? Now watch what that word says. He says, this is what the Father, don't miss it, seeks after. In other words, God, don't miss this, is doing the same thing you're doing towards him. Okay, what do you mean? The same way you're seeking after God, God is seeking after you. Now watch this, hold on, because see, he's not seeking everybody. Oh boy. Who's he seeking? He's seeking the true worshipers. Now, 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 now watch this. Here, here's what you're going to miss. Now, everybody is not a true worshiper. In order to have worship with God, you've got to have relationship with God. Now, 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 this is going to get crazy right in here because everybody in the church don't have relationship. We may have an acquaintance with God. But we don't have a relationship with God. Because if you have a relationship with God, you can co-sign with Big, with big Daddy. With Daddy say, he walks with me. <laughs> Talks with me. Tells me that I'm his own. And the joy that we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. Sometimes you ain't got to wait for God. You ain't got to go talk to God. God will come and talk to you. Come here, son, to school. That's what got Adam in trouble. Adam got out of his place of worship. God used to come and talk to him. But when you operate in sin and you don't worship anymore, you move out of position with God. And God says, I'm looking for you. God wants your worship. Worship gets us in trouble when we don't do it. It's got, it's got to have relationship because God does not want empty worship. How, how can I prove that? Uh, I, I'm going ahead of myself, but in Genesis chapter 4, it proves how God doesn't like empty worship. Come here, Cain and Abel. Because they both were in the Lord's presence. One just gave him something, but the other gave him the best. And God, who we, does not want our mess. God wants our best. See, I, I, I know you're not going to believe it when I say it. But when you leave worship, you ought to leave horse sweaty and tired. There ought to be some perspiration somewhere. There ought to be some tiredness somewhere. Because you've been worshiping God with everything that's on the inside of you. How is it that you give a job eight hours of your time, but can't give God two hours worth of worship? God is saying to you, something is wrong with that picture. Somebody ought to know you've been in the presence of the Lord. Ask Moses. When Moses came down from the mountain, his face was white as snow. There ought to be evidence. You've been tired. You spent time with Jesus. Time is coming. He said, I'm looking for those true worshipers. I'm looking for those who are going to honor me rightly. He says, I want those who are going to worship me, not just because somebody told them to, but because I'm worthy of the worship. He says, watch this, God is a spirit, which means worship is never carnal. Don't miss that. Worship is never carnal. What did I just say? Worship is never 
praise is carnal. How do you know that? I, 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 I go back to Psalm 150. He says, let everything. Okay, you're missing it. Let every, let ev that means everything in creation has a responsibility to praise God. The, 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 the wino can praise God for the boons for him in it. Y'all ain't talking back to me. Oh the, the, the crackhead can thank God for the pipe. That's carnal. But when it comes to spirit, you ain't worshiping God for the apartment. You ain't worshiping God that the rent got paid. What you're doing is you're worshiping God because he's Alpha and Omega. You're worshiping God because he's the beginning and the end. You're worshiping him because he's the first and the last. And if he doesn't do anything else, I still have a right to worship him. Oh, yes, I do. God is a spirit. And they that worship him. Got to worship him in spirit. That means you got to have a relationship. Let the church say relationship. When you got a relationship with God, it doesn't matter who you are or where you are. You're going to worship God at any time, at any place, because of the relationship you have with him. Let me show you what it is in contemporary, and I promise I'm sitting down. You remember Hanna-Barbera a few years ago created that cartoon named the Flintstones? You know, you remember the Flintstones, don't you? In any, in any episode, when Fred walks through the door and hollers out for Wilma, it's never Wilma that meets him at the front door, but it's a big purple dinosaur named Dino. You know Dino runs and jumps and in his face and starts licking his face. Now watch this. Fred ain't got no brontosaurus burger in his pocket, but Dino's still licking on him. Uh, Fred ain't got no bone with him, but Dino still licking on him and the reason why Dino's still licking on him is because he's got a relationship with Fred y'all looking but ain't listening and the reason why we worship God is not because of what he does for us I didn't mean to go there but he is mine and I am his and it doesn't matter what anybody else says about me I got a relationship with me I got a relationship with God where I can have a little talk with Jesus tell him all about my troubles he'll hear my faintest cry and answer by and by when you feel a little proud will turn in and know that the fire is so not burning up. Just a little talk oh, with Jesus will make it all right. Now I got a witness here. I don't need everybody now, but I need at least 10 of us in here who can say, Lord, if you don't do anything else, if you don't give me another car, if you don't give me another house, if you don't give me another man, if you don't give me another woman, I still worship your name. Oh, oh, worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. In other words, it's not what's on the outside, but it's what's on the inside. And when you see me worship God, it's not because of what's on the outside, but I'm worshiping him from within my heart have I got a witness here and the reason why I worship is because I serve a risen savior he's in the world today I know he is living no matter what men may say y'all sit there if you want to but I done preach myself happy I see his hand of mercy I hear his voice of cheer and just when I need him he's always near what are you trying to say preacher he lives yes he lives he walks with me he talks with me all along life's narrow ways he lives salvation to impart this is what I'm trying to get to you ask me how 
know he lives he lives he lives in my heart can I ask you a question if you're not too mean to answer can I ask you a question ain't it all right ain't it all right won't it walk with you won't it talk with you won't it guide your feet won't it hold your hand if you know it's all right oh magnify the lord with me and let us exalt his name if you're not too mean to do it can we worship him if you're not too mean to do it can you give him glory can you give him honor can you give him praise hallelujah 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 Come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us worship him. Who are you worshiping? If you don't know who I'm talking about, you can't shout through here. But if you know who I'm talking about, come on, help me testify. Oh, come, let us worship him. Who is him? Mary's baby. Joseph's stepson, Adam's redeemer, Abel's vindicator, Abraham's promise, Isaac's substitute. You know him, don't you? Matthew's king, Mark's suffering servant, Luke's great physician. Help me talk about him. Paul's contentment, Peter's burden bearer. Help me talk about him. Rock in a weary land. Lily of the valley, bright and morning star, help me talk about him. Job's horse, born in the valley, Daniel stone, hewed out of a mountain, help me talk about him. Ezekiel's wheel, in the middle of a wheel, who you talking about preacher? One Friday, Woo! one Friday. A hill called Calvary. He died, didn't he die? But early, early Sunday morning, he got up. Yes, ain't it all right? Woo. to leave you alone but help me sit down now I had told you to talk to your neighbor but do it for me one time if you're not too mean to do it take a neighbor by the hand shake that hand shake it like you love Jesus shake it like you're born again look them in the eye and say neighbor know what he is to you but I know what he is to me ain't 